Hey, Hello listen. and welcome everyone. I'm Maddles and today I am joined by a very special guest. It is Swizzler. Hello everybody, Swizzler here. How are you, Swizzler? I'm I'm doing fine, thanks. Um, we've got a really good game here. Uh, Teja, you know, uh, we were just casting a little while back for uh, GG and Teja is, is at the same level. He's a really yep. good player. Uh, really interesting to see what's going to happen here. I'd actually say Tasia's above 4GG's level at the moment. I would argue that. Yeah, well, yeah, they they went back and forth uh, a little while ago, but uh, what makes you say that? I just think Tasia's current results, his current play style, he's really showing an improvement, whereas I'd argue 4GG in especially recent months, 2013 as a whole, has actually been showing a bit of a, de a decline in his ability, which is never a good thing to see, and I really hope he picks it up. But Tasia, he's just been playing really solid. But of course, we'll wait to see what he does in this game. He's up against Huang Sing, who is the blue Protoss player in the bottom right, and Tasia is spawning in the bottom left as the red Terran. So, Newkirk, PVT. What's your thoughts on PVT as a matchup, Swizzler? Do you like this game? PVT is awesome. Uh, you know, I, a lot of people say, okay, you know, PVT it hasn't changed too much uh, since since back in, in Wings of Liberty. But to me, you know, Protoss is my favorite uh, race. Terran is my second favorite race, and I don't like mirror matches. So this is the the pen ultimate uh, matchup for me. So you know, if we can see some some macro here, some massive armies, some massive death balls uh, fighting each other, maybe see some some air toss. You know, get the golden fleet out, see how they do. That would be pretty cool. I think that would be awesome. And I can't believe do people really say that PVT hasn't changed much in Heart of the Swarm. What about the Mothership Core? It's like redefining the matchup as a whole. Yeah, the, the Mothership Core. Yeah, I, I, I can suppose see late you're right. Game. I can see late game. I can see the yeah, argument. Late, late there. game. Yeah. But early game, early game is so different. Like, how, when would you ever see a Protoss player really going for a Nexus first in Wings of Liberty? It'd be so risky. Oh, absolutely. You're right. You're right. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're right. That that uh, that Mothership Core gives the Protoss the ability to get the early aggression uh, going out. You know, because he doesn't have to worry. You know, if there was always a problem with mobility, right? And how do you get back to your base as as a Protoss? And you know that's that's a huge problem. But with the recall ability, no worries. Just go out there, try to push push the Terran as much as possible. Don't let him get greedy. And you're even right. if you yeah. don't move out, then you've always got the option of just sitting back using Photon Overcharge on your Nexus and hold off a lot of those very frustrating early kind of Marine Marauder pushes that came out of Terrans, which is really made you very safe as a Protoss player in the early game up until really the kind of Stim Marine Marauder Medivac push timings with plus one. And that is such a nice position for the matchup to be in, in my opinion. But as we see, of course, being on Newkirk, there's always the option for drop play and air play to be really substantial just due to the positioning. But for the time being, we'll have to wait and see. We've got six probes and gas actually at the moment for Huang Sing. So he is committing quite heavily to that gas income. You know what would be interesting? Uh, a Dark Templar timing would be quite interesting on this map, maybe with a Warp Prism. Yep. Uh, that would be pretty cool. And of course, Dark Templar is so much more viable now after they... It was only such a minor change to the cost of getting the Dark Shrine, but it made it such a more sensible opening, in my opinion. It makes it really a lot more viable. We've got the SCV in here for Tasia at the moment, so he's taking a good look at what's coming down, sees where the Chrono Boosts are being spent. The Mothership Core is not yet started. I'd imagine it's going to get started up pretty soon, though, for Tasia, uh, for Hwang Sing, rather, and then he can just start moving out with that Zealot probably in two Stalkers, if he does want to push out and just get a little build for the map control. Yeah, he's probably going to push out because, I mean, there's there's not really much of a reason not to, right? Especially uh, when he gets his Mothership Core out here in a second. Uh, he can just move right across the map, push out, like we said before, the, the Terran's front. Don't let him uh, get greedy. And, uh, you know, back to that, that Dark Templar timing. The, it helps to punish the, the Terran if he's too greedy with his mules. If he doesn't have enough energy for the scans, I mean, it could be just GG right there. It can uh, be. You know, that'd be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see that. Uh, right now we see that there's two more gateways going down uh, back at Huanshim's base. So he's probably going to be putting a little bit of pressure uh, up on the front of the Terran. And he's got the Mother's Report coming down across the, the bottom there. Uh, probably going to do some scouting, uh, try to maybe snipe uh, some, some of those uh, outlying SCVs off of their, uh, their buildings. Uh, always effective against the Terran, yep. you know, just trying to keep them bottled up a bit. Don't let them get, you know, so gritty because the Terran, you know, their economy is so powerful, especially with the mules. 
And if you do manage to snipe off a couple of the STVs while they're working, it's only going to be good. But for the moment, it looks like Wan Sing is actually just going to pull back with that Mothership Core. Gets a quick read, sees the third command center, and that's the really important thing. Oh, no, he didn't see it. He didn't actually spot the third command center there. He oh, came in with the Mothership Core. didn't see it. But he pulled back too far. So he does not know that's there. He's just seen the barracks. That is... Oh, that's going to be a mistake. That's going to come back to, to bite them. Yeah, it will. But it looks like your prediction was nearly right. There was the Twilight Council coming down with Blink and also the Robotics facility. We could see some Blink play, which I quite like on Newkirk, because there is this double cliff you can really try to exploit and negate any effectiveness of the bunkers that are being placed at the front. Yeah, it feels to me like Kwang Sin isn't, isn't going uh, really, really hardcore in any direction right now. It feels like he's playing fairly safe, you know... Quite standard, nothing, nothing too crazy. You know, he he does the mother core, or mothership core uh, scouting. You know, nothing too too crazy going out from him. Uh, this is looking like it's going to shape up to be quite the macro game if if none of the timings manage to push into either of these players' base. I think the one thing that we've really got to keep an eye out for is what comes down with this blink because, of course, we see the double forger coming down, which is an indicator that, obviously, the Protoss player wants to take it to the longer stages. But with these three additional gateways that have just been placed in the natural base of Huang Sing, he's got six gates plus blink. That's a lot of production. He can make a really nice timing push. And that's why we're seeing Tasia chuck down the additional two bunkers and also clearly a bit worried about the DT play, putting the missile tide down there. But the first observer as well, that's only just coming out now. So that's quite delayed. Yes, you're right, and there's also the pylon down there. Uh, I'm not sure, but Mattles, you can blink right across that crevice there, like you said, correct? Yes, you can. Yeah, so that's going to be... Oh, man, if... Oh, jeez. If if Tasia isn't able to react to that in time, you know, there's going to be a, a stalkers just, you know, blinking right across there, sniping uh, SCVs. Oh, look at that time warp. Uh, he's getting ready. Oh, no, he's, he's baiting him. Look at this one thing. He chucks the time warp down on the ramp, trying to get a little bit of a... A little bit of an indicator. Am I going to move up there? The mothership core baiting all those marines back. This is really tense now, Swizzler. Yeah. Oh, is he going to split his stalkers and try to try to split uh, Tasia's army? Or is he just going to go full on on the front? You know, I, I, it, it seems like he's missing the chance to to use that blink to its full extent to just you know get some stalkers down on the bottom. But you know, Tasia he knows it too. So it could just be. They know each other. They know that, that, that this is an option, you know, going across that crevice there and, and sniping some SCVs and get through the back. It, maybe it's just too risky uh, for Hansen to come across there. Well, Tej is doing such an amazing job, to be honest. Like, he's kept a couple of units in these three bunks at the front. That's a nice defensive area. But he's also keeping the vast majority of his infantry on the ramp. So no matter which way Huang Sing decided to go in, he would be met by infantry very quickly. So all he's really achieving for the time being is just containing his opponent. He's not warping in additional stalkers. Back home, he's just warping in more zealots and a couple of sentries. So he's really gearing up for the later stages. He's getting charge coming down. And he's also got the 1-1 one -one upgrades near complete whereas Tasia he's actually just gonna go try and take his third but it will get spotted by this stalker and therefore this orbit command could be in a little bit of trouble should Huang Sing want to go and destroy him. Yeah the one one is 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 up now and um you know there's no zealots on, on oh, the Oh Tasia's uh, moving down yet. the ramp oh. for the natural he's pushing those stalkers back that is really nice the plasma shell is not quite done so they can escape for a few more seconds but in two seconds oh that was so lucky for Huang Sing there the concussive shell wasn't finished Oh, that was quite the timing right there. Yeah, the concussion shells just barely. Just barely free. So that was that was nearly a very disastrous push out for Huang Sing. But Teja, he secured his third. Meanwhile, we see that Huang Sing just taking his third nexus there. And he's just pumping a huge numbers of zealots out while getting his first Colossus up down. Yeah, Huang Sing is being very reactive right now. You know, as soon as he saw that his stalkers were not going to get across the crevice and he wasn't going to be able to put any meaningful pressure onto the Terran, he, he just put up that base. But, you know, to be honest, right now there is a lot of Marines and, and they're engaging right in the front, right in the front here. The, the four stalkers versus a bunch of Marines and a Marauder, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're just going to fall right back to the base. And this is going to be uh, Terran versus Protoss and Zealot, massive army. Yep. Oh, man, they're going to, they're going to, probably duke it out here right in a few seconds i mean the there's oh, only the single colossus though and it's a fake colossus as well because we've got storm on the way but you could identify that a lot sooner by the fact that there was no extended thermal lance getting research so this is just trying to trick tasia into producing far too many vikings in order to deal with that single colossus you can see already he's making four vikings at a time he's somewhat falling for this already swizzler and that means his tech switch into the high templar is going to be oh so much more effective yeah, wow, that's a lot of Vikings. Uh, I mean, if, if Huang Xin, yeah, Huang Xin, he's just going to go with the Templars and 
Oh, meta games. Mind the games right here. This is really smart. Tasia needs to identify that there isn't a second Colossus and also that extended thermal lance isn't down. We see that there is no scans coming down at the moment. He has seen the robotics bay but didn't see whether he was researching anything. And also he has no idea about the double forge. He doesn't know about the Templar archive. So that's a lot of information that isn't available to Tasia that he really needs. But he does have currently the supply advantage. And also there's equal upgrades for around the next 30 seconds. Yeah, it's it's just right now it's feeling like um, the Terran he just he doesn't have the scouting information he needs to to react to this. You know, it, the uh, Hansen is just he's hiding this this high Templar and he's got a single Colossus. Oh, there's not even a Ghost Academy down. That's the scary thing right yeah, now for Tasia. The, 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 this massive ball of Marines and Marauders are going to have a very difficult oh, time good. against this map. Oh, look at that scan. That scan is brilliant. He sees all the High Templar there. He knows what's coming now. He knows this is still in the thing for losses. Down comes the oh. storms. Dealing some okay damage, but the Vikings are going to shred through that Colossus very quickly. And now with only the storms, this is going to have to be very, very nicely micro by the Protoss player in order to engage that force. Yeah, it's it's dicey right now. I mean, if the, it's all up to the storms right now. The storms are going to decide the, the whole battle. The storms and, and the the sentries with their their force fields are going to decide the whole thing. And here we go. We've got the oh, engagement coming down. The storms are starting to hit. Good micro at the moment, but there's some big storms at the back. Oh. So much of the infantry getting annihilated. Wow. They're that trading was... even. They're trading even right now. They, that was well. It completely destroyed all the standing army. But at the same time, we've got the Vikings attacking this fourth base location. The moment one thing on top of that engagement, I think if we look at the resources lost, we can actually see that Tasia lost a considerable amount more in this game so far. But the important thing is there's only one High Templar remaining on the field. Yeah, all of the advanced tech was knocked out, so he's got to be careful. Hunks has got to be careful. Yeah, he's but got he, yeah, he does have the Archons, though. So yeah. that, that, those are going to help the up, up front. And of course, Tasia doesn't have really that much behind this, and there's so many relatives to tank up the damage. You can see that he is going to try and move up the ramp into the natural. The Archons dealing some oh. light damage, but the Hellbat really taking a considerable amount of fire, but it's just uh, not going to be enough. I think Hong Sing is going to be able to take this game here. Oh, man. There's, what, can, what can Tasia do? Oh. Good game. There is, there is very little he can do there. And those storms, they were brilliant. Yeah, those storms are excellent. I, Tasia had some some godlike, some godlike micro with his marines. He was splitting them four or five different ways. Yep. But if you if you watch Hongston, he was waiting. He did not he didn't just drop all of his storms all on one spot. He waited for the the quick movement of of the marines. And when they stopped, boom, there's the storm right away really really nice to see so that was of course a very fun game it was from the team story cup if you enjoyed it make sure you like the video leave a cool comment and of course subscribe big thank you swizzler for coming on i'm sure we'll see you some more in the future and with that we will see you oh i'll catch you all tomorrow bye for now